Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting blog. In this video, I do a detailed analysis of the new 7mm Precision Rifle cartridge and how it compares to the 7mm Remington Magnum and 28 Nosler rifle cartridges. Now, I have never seen a cartridge make as big of a splash as the 7mm PRC did when it was first introduced, and lots of hunters are curious about how this brand new cartridge will perform afield. It's only natural that many hunters would compare the brand new 7PRC with other tried and true 7mm magnums like the 28 Nosler and the 7mm Remington Magnum. All offer certain advantages to hunters, but there are some significant differences between those three cartridges that you need to be aware of before purchasing a new rifle. Now, both the 7 Rim Mag and the 28 Nosler are very effective cartridges with loyal fan bases. However, the 7 PRC has some noteworthy advantages over each one in a few key areas. Even so, that cartridge is not perfect and there are still reasons to like the venerable 7 Rim Mag and the hopped up Hot Rod 28 Nosler. For that reason, I investigate in detail how the 28 Nosler 7 PRC and 7mm Remington Magnum compare to each other in detail in this episode and provide some insight into which 7mm Magnum cartridge is ideally suited for various hunting situations so you can make an it. For that reason, I investigate the 28 Nosler vs. 7 PRC vs. 7 mm Rim Mag debate in detail in this episode, and I provide some insight into which 7 mm Magnum rifle cartridge is ideally suited for various hunting situations so you can make an informed decision on which one will work best for your individual needs. Now, before we get started, I'd appreciate it if you'd do me a couple of favors. So first, hit that red subscribe button below to sign up for my channel. Make sure you get all of my new content on future cartridge comparisons, gear reviews, things like that. Next, make sure you're on my email list. To do that, click that link in the video description below or go to huntingguns101.com and sign up there for my free ebook on the best hunting cartridges. You'll get my free ebook when you do that, plus you'll also start to receive the emails I send out every weekday. These are entertaining and informative emails about hunting, shooting, ballistics, etc. I get feedback all the time from people telling me how much they enjoy receiving those emails and how much they look forward to hearing from me every day. So make sure you're getting them too by clicking that link in the video description or by going to huntingguns101.com. Okay, let's get started talking about the 7 Rim Mag, the 28 Nosler, and the new 7mm Precision Rifle cartridges. As usual, we'll start with the history of these three cartridges. Now, the decades immediately following World War I saw a true renaissance of civilian firearm and cartridge development in the USA. That general time period saw a flood of new centerfire rifle cartridges like the 223 Remington, the 243 Winchester, and the 308 Winchester. Now, that same time period also saw the start of the modern quote unquote Magnum era when Winchester introduced a line of new belted Magnum cartridges that utilized a modified 375 H and H case. Now, it is true that Roy Weatherby had started to introduce some of his Magnums slightly before then. Many of his cartridges were and remain very popular with certain segments of the hunting community. Even so, though, as popular as they were, things really went to the next level when Winchester and later Remington started cranking out their belted Magnum cartridges here after World War II. Now, Winchester introduced the 458 Winchester Magnum first in 1956, and then they released the 264 Winchester Magnum and the 338 Winchester Magnum during the next couple of years. Those three cartridges utilized a 375 H&H Magnum case necked down, or up in the case of the 458 Win Mag, and shortened from 2.85 inches to 2.5 inches long. The designers used those shortened cases so all three new cartridges would fit in a standard length rifle action, same as the 270 and the 30 6 instead of the longer Magnum length action required by the original 375 Holland and Holland Magnum cartridge. Now, those cartridges all saw a good deal of commercial success, and nobody was really surprised when Remington took a page out of Winchester's playbook 
and they introduced their own belted Magnum cartridge in 1962, the 7mm Remington Magnum. Now, that new Remington cartridge also used a neck-down and shortened 375 H&H Magnum case. Now, instead of using 264, 338, 458, and later 308 caliber bullets like Winchester did with their Magnums, Remington loaded their new cartridge with a .284 caliber bullet. Now, the 30-06 was and remains the gold standard by which most similar cartridges are judged. Will the use of a larger case based on the 375 H&H, along with the use of smaller diameter 7mm or .284 caliber bullets by the 7mm Remington Magnum, resulted in a significant ballistic improvement over the 30-06. Indeed, the 7 Rim Mag will shoot the same weight bullet faster than the 30-06. Additionally, the narrower 284 caliber bullets the 7mm Magnum uses have a higher ballistic coefficient and more sectional density than 30 caliber bullets of the same weight and general shape profile used by the 30 6 For those reasons, typical 7mm rim mag loads have a flatter trajectory, have more energy remaining downrange, and all other things equal, will penetrate better than 30-06 loads using the same weight bullets. Now, like the new Winchester Magnum cartridges, the new 7mm Remington Magnum cartridge also fit in a standard length rifle action. And to top it all off, that cartridge was rolled out at the same time as the now legendary Remington Model 700 rifle. So American hunters and shooters were immediately offered the chance to use a new, high-performance cartridge that was available in a well-built, reasonably priced, and very accurate new rifle. With all that in mind, it's not surprising at all the flat shooting and hard hitting 7mm rim mag quickly caught on with hunters and shooters in North America. And the 7mm rim mag remains extremely popular among hunters to this day. However, there is another heavy hitting 7mm Magnum cartridge that really sticks out from the crowd the 28 Nosler. Now, Nosler initially made a name for itself in the hunting community by developing revolutionary hunting bullets like the Nosler Partition, Nosler Acubon, Nosler Expansion Tip, or the E-Tip, and the Nosler Ballistic Tip bullets during the second half of the 20th century and into the early 21st century. Well, Nosler dove headfirst into the cartridge development world with the introduction of their new 26 Nosler rifle cartridge in 2013. The name 26 Nosler reflects both the name of the company as well as the first two digits of the cartridge bullet diameter, .264 caliber in the case of the 26 Nosler. Based on a slightly modified 404 Jeffrey case neck down to shoot .264 caliber bullets, the 26 Nosler was definitely in the running for the title of the world's most powerful 6.5 millimeter commercial cartridge. Now, the 26 Nosler was a big enough commercial success that Nosler introduced the 28 Nosler, which, in the same naming convention, fires 7mm or .284 caliber bullets as the next addition to their line of Nosler proprietary cartridges in 2015. Now, like the 26 Nosler, the 28 Nosler also uses a modified 404 Jeffrey case that is necked down and shortened to fit in a standard 30-06 length action. They decided to use a 1 and 9 inch rifling twist rate for the 28 Nosler that is optimal for the longer and higher BC 7mm or .284 caliber bullets that they use in that cartridge, like the 175 grain Acubon long range bullet. Now, the end result is a massively powerful cartridge capable of launching those heavy for caliber and pretty aerodynamic bullets at muzzle velocities in excess of 3,100 feet per second. That cartridge is also capable of firing lighter, 140, 150, and 160 grain bullets approximately 200 to 300 feet per second faster than the old 7mm rim mag with those same weight bullets. Now, not surprisingly, that flat shooting and hard hitting 28 Nosler is a favorite among hunters pursuing big game like Elk, who won a cartridge that offers excellent performance at extended range. Now, the success of the 26 and 28 Nosler did spur the development of additional Nosler cartridges. And as of 2023, the lineup of Nosler cartridges also includes the 22 Nosler, introduced in 2017, the 27 Nosler, introduced in 2020, the 30 Nosler, introduced in 2016, and the 33 Nosler, which was also introduced in 2016. 
Now, of these, the 28 Nosler is by far the most popular as I record this episode, and it has a loyal following among those who appreciate the hard-hitting, long-range performance the cartridge delivers. Now, as good as the Nosler cartridges are, though, Hornady has recently designed their new series of precision rifle cartridges to go about delivering a similar level of hard-hitting performance on game at long range in a slightly different manner. Now, the 6.5 and the 300 PRC were the first two members of the family, and they both hit the market around the same time a couple years ago. Initially designed to serve very different needs, the two cartridges were somewhat closely related and also incorporated many of the same design features. They had a long head height, a long case neck, a relatively fast rifling twist rate, and some specific chamber design features intended to help enhance accuracy. Now, those cartridges use a modified 375 Ruger cartridge case. Now, the 375 Ruger was designed with the same 0.532 case head diameter of the 375 H&H. However, unlike the 375 H&H and the cartridges like the 7 Rim Mag and 300 Win Mag that are descended from it, the 375 Ruger is a beltless cartridge with minimal taper, so the actual body of the 375 Ruger case is larger in diameter than is the case with the 375 H&H. Now, that results in a slight increase in case capacity for the 375 Ruger and all the cartridges designed from it, while still working with a standard Magnum bolt face. Now, head height, which I just mentioned, is the amount of space available for a bullet outside the case while still staying within the SAMI specifications for the cartridge in terms of overall length. So put simply, more head height facilitates the use of very long aerodynamic bullets without requiring them to be seated so deeply into the case that they intrude into the powder column. Now, in that same vein, rifles chambered in the precision rifle cartridges typically have a relatively fast rifling twist rate, usually around 1 in 8 inches, in order to stabilize those long, heavy, high BC bullets. They're also built with a long enough case neck to provide adequate neck tension with those long bullets, which can also help with accuracy. And those cartridges also have a relatively, quote-unquote, tight freeboard diameter. Now, freebore is the smooth portion of a rifle barrel closest to the cartridge. Having a more snug freebore diameter means there's less room for the bullet to yaw upon firing, but before engaging the rifling. This can also help enhance accuracy. Now, the end result was that both the 6.5 and the 300 PRC were optimized to accurately shoot very long, sleek, high BC bullets at magnum velocities. Will the success of those two cartridges had many in the shooting community clamoring for a 7mm PRC to fill the gap between the little 6.5 and the much larger 300 PRC? They got what they asked for when Hornady received formal SAMI certification for the 7mm precision rifle cartridge in 2022 and then officially announced the new cartridge to the world later that year. Instead of attempting to push a bullet with a pretty high BC as fast as possible in a long action rifle, like Nosler did with the 28 Nosler, Hornady designed the 7mm PRC to fire heavier bullets with an insanely high ballistic coefficient right at about 3,000 feet per second. Plus, they also incorporated those aforementioned design features into the cartridge to improve the overall accuracy potential for the new cartridge. The end result is the 7PRC is extremely efficient and generally isn't difficult to tune for accuracy and uses very high BC bullets that hang on to velocity and buck the wind surprisingly well as they travel downrange. Okay, let's talk about how these three cartridges stack up to each other in terms of overall size. So first, while the 28 Nosler does have a slightly larger rim diameter than the other two, 0.532 inches for the 7 rim mag and PRC versus 0.534 inches for the 28 Nosler, they all use a larger diameter cartridge case and they require a magnum bolt face. The 28 Nosler has a rebated rim while the other two do not. Since they are descended from different cartridges, right, the 375 H&H Belta Magnum for the 7 Rim Mag and the Beltless 404 Jeffrey for the 28 Nosler and the Beltless 375 Ruger for the 7 PRC, the 7 Rim Mag uses a belted case while the other two have a beltless case. Furthermore, it's important to note that the actual case diameter of the 28 Nosler, 0.55 inches, 
and 7PRC at 0.533 inches is larger than the non-belted portion of the 7 rim mag case, 0.513 inches. Additionally, the 7 rim mag has a 25 degree shoulder angle, the 7 PRC has a 30 degree shoulder angle, and the 28 Nosler has a 35 degree shoulder angle. Next, though the 28 Nosler and 7 PRC have a slightly longer overall length than the 7 rim mag, all three cartridges are designed for use in a long or a standard length action. Same as the 30 out 6 and the 270, like I said earlier. Now next, the 28 Nosler and the 7 Rim Mag do have a slightly longer case length than the 7 PRC, though. That goes back to what I was saying about head height earlier, and the 7mm PRC has the most head height out of these three cartridges. That comes at the expense of a little bit of powder capacity here, though. In fact, the 7 PRC actually has the least powder capacity of the group, about 3 to 4% less than the 7 Rim Mag. The giant 28 Nosler case has a slightly larger case capacity and can hold quite a bit more powder than the 7 Rim Mag and the 7 PRC, about 22% more than the 7 Rim Mag and about 26% more than the 7 mm PRC. Now, while all three cartridges use the same .284 caliber diameter bullet, bullet weight is another important difference between these three cartridges. So first, most 7 rim mag factory loads shoot bullets in the 139 to 175 grain range. 140, 150, 160, and 175 grain loads are by far the most common. It's important to note that the 7 rim mag isn't optimized for performance with long, sleek, high BC bullets, though. High BC bullets for the 7 rim mag tend to top out in the 162 to 168 grain range, like the 162 grain ELDX, 168 grain Burger Hybrid Hunter, or the 168 grain Acubon long range. Most 175 grain loadings for the 7 millimeter rim mag use shorter and lower BC pointed soft nose or round nose bullets, like the 175 grain Core Lock, 175 grain Power Shock, or 175 grain Trophy Bonded Bear Claw. For example, the 162 grain ELDX is 1.48 inches long, 168 grain Acubon long range is 1.5 inches long. The 175 grain Acubon long range that the 28 Nosler uses is 1.54 inches long, and the 175 grain ELDX that the 7PRC uses is a whopping 1.585 inches long. Now, to put that into perspective, the 7mm 175-grain Trophy Bonded Bear Claw is a very heavy-for-caliber lead-core bullet that's not especially sleek or aerodynamic. has a G1BC of 0 0.407. Not bad, but not super high either. That bullet is just 1.41 inches long, and it's actually quite a bit shorter than even the 162-grain ELDX. Now, the situation is similar with mono metal loadings, which usually top out around 150 grains for the 7mm rim mag, like the 140 and the 150 grain TTSX and Trophy Copper loads from Barnes and Federal, and the 150 grain CX from Hornady. Now, it's true there are some 7 rim mag loads with 160 grain TSX, but that's the non tipped version of the TSX, and it does have a lower BC than the 140 or the 150 grain TTSX. So yes, it is possible for hand loaders to use heavier and higher BC lead core and mono metal bullets in the 7mm rim mag, but the cartridge is just simply not optimized for use with bullets like the 160 grain CX or the 168 grain LRX or the 175 grain ELDX, and performance can be uneven. Plus, that's also just not an option for people who do not hand load, and sometimes making that step using those really heavy high BC bullets in the 7 rim mag requires making some modifications to the rifle in one way or another. So not only is it not an option for people that don't hand load, sometimes it's something that you can't do uh, with the, just a factory off-the-shelf rifle either. Moving on, the 28 Nosler most often uses bullets in the 150 to 185 grain range in factory loads. 150, 155, 160, 162, and 175 grain bullets are most common for that car cartridge for hunters. Now, the fact that the 28 Nosler is available with that high BC 175 grain Acubon long range bullet from Nosler, 0.648 BC, as a factory load is an especially important advantage for this cartridge. All right, finally, the 7 PRC most often uses bullets in the 150 to 180 grain range. 160 grain, 175, and 180 grain bullets are the most common. In particular, it was 
designed from the start to use high BC 160 grain mono metal and 175 and 180 grain lead core bullets. Why is there a difference in bullet weights for these cartridges? Well, there's two primary reasons for that, rifling twist rate and head height. Now, the 7 Rim Mag and the 28 Nosler both have SAMI spec rifling twist rates of 1 and 9.5 inches and 1 and 9 inches, respectively, while the 7 PRC has a faster SAMI specified rifling twist rate of 1 and 8 inches. Additionally, the greater head height of the 7mm PRC just gives that cartridge more space to use that really long high BC bullet that still fits in a standard length rifle action without modification and magazine, same deal there, and without seeding the bullet so deep into the case that it intrudes into the powder column. And finally, the 28 Nosler 7 PRC are loaded to a higher SAMI maximum average pressure of 65,000 PSI versus 61,000 PSI for the 7 Rim Mag. Now, the differences in external dimensions of those cartridges does translate into some stark differences in their ballistic performance. This is illustrated when you compare Hornady Outfitter and Hornady Precision Hunter factory ammo for each cartridge. Now, the 28 Nosler is available in the Hornady Precision Hunter line, but not the Outfitter line. And so for this reason, I decided to include a 28 Nosler load using a 150 grain Nosler E-tip, which is similar to the CX in this comparison. And furthermore, I could not do a comparison involving the 28 Nosler without the flagship 175 grain Acubon long range load, so I included it in well. Now, the seven Rim Mag loads use 150 grain CX, 0.455 BC, and 162 grain ELDX with a 0.631 BC bullet. The 7mm PRC loads use 160 grain CX with a 0.596 BC and 175 grain ELDX bullets with a 0.689 BC. Now the 28 Nosler loads use 150 grain E tip, 0.498 BC, 162 grain ELDX, 0.631 BC, and 175 grain Acubon long range with a 0.648 BC. Note that the CX and the E-tip are lead-free monolithic projectiles designed by Hornady and Nosler to deliver high weight retention and deep penetration. However, as a monolithic projectile, they do not have nearly as high of a BC as the ELDX or the Acubon Long Range projectiles. Additionally, while the ELDX and the Acubon Long Range are designed to expand at velocities as low as 1,350 feet per second, The E-tip and the CX require a much faster impact velocity of at least 1,800 feet per second for the E-tip and about 2,000 feet per second for the CX. Now, before going into the details of comparing the ballistics of these cartridges, I want to point out that the various bullets used in the 7 PRC loads all have a higher BC than those used in comparable 7 Rim Mag and 28 Nosler loads. Okay, so when you compare these loads right off the bat, you can see quickly that the 28 Nosler, 150 grain E-tip, 162 grain ELDX, and the 175 grain Acubon long range loads are actually the flattest shooting loads of the bunch. That really says something when a mono metal bullet like 150 grain E-tip is shooting flatter than lead core projectiles and other high performance cartridges. That is due to the fact that all three of those 28 Nosler loads have a higher muzzle velocity than either 7 Rim Mag or the 7 PRC. Heck, the 28 Nosler is flinging a 175 grain bullet 125 to 185 feet per second faster than the 7 Rim Mag shoots a 162 grain bullet or the 7 PRC shoots a 160 grain bullet. However, all of these loadings, but especially the 7 mm PRC and the 28 Nosler, are relatively flat shooting and just 9.1 inches separates the flattest shooting load from the most arcing load at 500 yards. If you drop that 150 grain CX load for the 7 millimeter rim mag, you get just 6.6 inches of separation between all those loads at 500 yards. Now, not surprisingly, the 28 Nosler also has more muzzle energy across the board than either of the other two cartridges. Even so, the 7 millimeter PRC does still do really well here, and both loads for that cartridge carry over 1,800 foot-pounds of kinetic energy out past 500 yards, and over 2,100 foot-pounds of energy in the case of that 175 grain ELDX. Now, when compared to the 7 millimeter rim mag, the various 7 PRC loads have about 3 to 17 percent more muzzle energy. At 500 yards, the 162 grain load for the 7 millimeter rim mag and the 160 grain CX load for the 7 PRC have almost exactly the same amount of energy remaining. Think about that for a second, too. That precision hunter loading for the 7 millimeter rim mag is a fantastic load using one of the highest BC bullets available for that cartridge in a factory offering. 
But the 7PRC has a load shooting a much tougher mono metal bullet that shoots a tiny bit flatter and has basically the same amount of retained energy at 500 yards. Additionally, the much higher BC 175 grain ELDX load has 18 to 53% more retained energy than both 7mm rim mag loads at 500 yards. Now, both the 7PRC loads shoot a little bit flatter than both 7 rim mag loads with 1.1 to 5 inches less bullet drop at 500 yards. Now, on the other hand, the various 28 Nosler loads have about 0.5% to 19% more muzzle energy than the 7PRC. The 175 grain Acubon long range loading for the 28 Nosler has about 6 to 26% more energy than the 7 PRC loadings at 500 yards. However, that 175 grain ELDX load for the 7 PRC actually, quote unquote, catches the 150 grain E tip load for the 28 Nosler at just under 100 yards in terms of kinetic energy and actually has about 19% more kinetic energy at 500 yards. Interestingly, things are similar with the 160 grain CX and the 175 grain ELDX load for the 7 PRC, and those two loads also quote unquote catch the 150 grain E tip and the 162 grain ELDX loadings for the 28 Nosler, respectively, out to around 500 yards. Now, if you're a little confused about what I just said, the 175 grain ELDX catches the 150 grain E tip around 100 yards. The 160 grain CX catches the 150 grain E tip around 500 yards. The same is true with the 175 grain ELDX catching the 162 grain ELDX from the 28 Nosler, also at around 500 yards. Now, this is because those PRC loads use much more aerodynamic bullets than the comparable 28 Nosler loads. At the same time, the 28 Nosler has about 13 to 26% more muzzle energy and about 19 to 62% more retained energy than the 7 rim mag at 500 yards. Now that 150 grain E-tip from the 28 Nosler is the exception here. The 162 grain ELDX from the 7 rim mag has a tiny bit more retained energy at 500 yards than that load. Now this is a good example of how a really high BC bullet can overcome a speed advantage with a lower BC bullet and quote unquote catch it. Now, all seven loads in this comparison easily maintain at least 1,000 foot-pounds of energy out past 500 yards. Everything but the seven rim mag, 150 grain CX load, has at least 1,500 pounds of energy at that range. The seven PRC, 175 grain ELDX, as well as the 162 and 175 grain 28 Nosler loads, all maintain over 2,000 foot-pounds of energy past 500 yards. So the big takeaways so far are that the 28 Nosler is the flattest shooting cartridge of the bunch and that 175 grain Acubon long range load has the most retained energy at 500 yards. But the more efficient 7 PRC holds its own pretty well and is either closing in on or has already surpassed all the various 28 Nosler loads at 500 yards. Now the 7 Rim Mag performs pretty well on the whole, but it clearly lags behind the other two in terms of both trajectory and retained energy. Now, interestingly, that 150 grain E-tip load for the 28 Nosler looks great on paper at first, but it rapidly loses steam in spite of its blazing fast muzzle velocity since it uses a comparatively low BC bullet. Now, those trends continue as we look out to even longer ranges. Now, note that I am not advocating using any of these cartridges for hunting at extreme range. That's a discussion for another day. But I'm just showing this comparison to show you how things develop as range increases. Now, once again, 28 Nosler does have the flattest trajectory of the bunch all the way out to 1,000 yards. Now, interestingly, the 175 grain ELDX load for the 7 PRC has nearly the same amount of kinetic energy remaining at 1,000 yards as that 175 grain loading for the 28 Nosler. Once again, that's because that 175 grain ELDX has the highest BC of all the bullets in this comparison. That allows it to retain energy and velocity better than everything else. Now, aside from trajectory, where the 28 Nosler still does have a significant advantage, those 275 grain loadings are basically identical out past 600 yards when the 28 Nosler kinetic energy advantage drops below 100 foot-pounds of energy differential, and it continues to fall as the range increases. Now, those two loadings also dip below their minimum recommended impact velocities and finally go subsonic at about the same range as well. All right, now let's talk about another really important factor, wind. Now, the same general trends hold true with regards to wind deflection, but this is where that 175 grain ELDX load for the 7PRC really starts to stand apart from the others. Now, when you compare all those 
loadings with a 10 mile an hour full value crosswind, interesting things start to happen. Now that 7PRC ELDX has the least wind deflection, followed by the 175 grain Acubon long range and the 28 Nosler, then the 28 Nosler ELDX, then the 7 Rim Mag ELDX, then the 7PRC CX, then the 28 Nosler ETIP, and finally that 7 Rim Mag 150 grain CX. All of those loads, but to a lesser extent with the 150 grain CX, have pretty good or even excellent wind bucking characteristics. The 175 grain ELDX and the 175 grain Acubon long range and that 162 grain ELDX from the 28 Nosler all have virtually identical wind deflection out of 500 yards. I would even say that having less than 12 inches of wind deflection at 500 yards with a 10 mile an hour full value crosswind like all three of those loads do is absolutely outstanding. Indeed, those three loads deliver some of the best performance in windy conditions currently available for big game hunting ammo right now. Now that 160CX has virtually the same amount of wind deflection as the 162 grain ELDX from the 7 Rim Mag at 500 yards as well, and while it's not as good as those other three loadings I just talked about, it's still really good. Now the 7 Rim Mag and 7 PRC Precision Hunter loads look pretty closely matched in this area at first. However, while that 1.6 inch difference in wind deflection between the 175 ELDX and the 162 grain ELDX at 500 yards might sa not sound like a tremendous amount, it's still a 12% advantage in favor of the 7PRC. Now those differences, as is often the case, become even more apparent at longer ranges though. For instance, the advantage that 175 grain ELDX load has over the 162 grain and 175 grain 7 Rim Mag and 28 Nosler loads continues to grow as the range increases. This is an area where the 28 Nosler really shines with a combination of high muzzle velocity and a very high BC bullet in that 175 Acubon long range. Indeed, it performs a lot better than most comparable loadings at extended range. However, a hunter or shooter looking for that little bit of an advantage would be well served to look at the 175 grain ELTX load for the 7mm PRC here. Why is this the case? Assuming the same wind conditions, wind deflection is dependent on bullet velocity and BC. However, small changes in ballistic coefficient result in bigger changes in wind deflection than is the case with velocity. So for this reason, that 7PRC load firing a super high BC 175 grain ELDX comes out on top here. And this is why the ELDX loadings for each cartridge and the Acubon long range for the 28 Nosler leave all the other stuff just in the dust in terms of wind deflection because of their much higher BC. Now, external ballistics don't tell the whole story, though, and there's more to picking a hunting cartridge than kinetic energy, bullet drop, or wind drift at various ranges. For instance, let's talk about recoil. Now, when you compare the heavy for caliber bullets for each cartridge uh, in identical rifles, you see that all have pretty stout recoil, but the 28 Nosler has quite a bit more recoil than the 7 Rim Mag and the 7 PRC. It's true that 175 grain Acubon long range load looks great on paper for the 28 Nosler, but that performance comes at the price of more recoil. Now the 175 grain Acubon long range load fires a heavy bullet at a much faster velocity and uses a lot more powder to achieve that performance than is the case with the other cartridges. The end result is the 28 Nosler has about 20% more free recoil energy than the 7 PRC and about 39% more recoil than the 7 Rim Mag. The 7 Rim Mag and the 7 PRC are more closely matched here, with the 7 PRC having about 16% more free recoil energy than the 7mm Rim Mag. Now even the 28 Nosler does not have a ridiculous amount of recoil. The recoil produced by this particular load is getting up there, and it is certainly stout, but it's also not so excessive that it is impossible to shoot. On the other hand, I would say the 7 PRC is a very shootable cartridge, though. Now, for reference, my 7 PRC has noticeably less recoil than typical 300 Win Mag loads. And the 7 Rim Mag does indeed have less, but I feel like both cartridges, the PRC and the Rim Mag, do have that sort of recoil that many people can handle pretty well without a lot of trouble, especially when you got a rifle that fits you well, has a good recoil pad, and or a muzzle brake or a suppressor. Now, these are all Magnum cartridges, and that 7 Rim Mag in particular does have a reputation for being a good option for people that want Magnum performance, but want recoil that's towards the lower end of what you're going to get for cartridges in that general category. I would say that the 7 PRC fits in there too, though it does recoil a little bit more. 
All right, now we've talked about recoil, there's a couple of other factors that are also worth considering. Now, even though all three cartridges use the same diameter bullet, the 7PRC has a slight edge over the other two in terms of bullet sectional density. Now, sectional density is a measure of the ratio of the diameter of a projectile to its mass. All other things equal, a heavier bullet of a given caliber will be longer and therefore have a higher sectional density and penetrate deeper than projectiles with a lower mass and lower sectional density. Well, the 175 grain loadings for the 7PRC and 28 Nosler are evenly matched here, but that 175 ELDX has an edge over the 162 grain ELDX here, 0 0.310 versus 0 0.287 uh, sectional density there. The same is true for the 160 grain CX, 0.283, versus the 150 grain CX and ETEP, 0.266 BC. To be fair, though, that 175 grain Acubon long range is generally a tougher bullet than the 175 grain ELDX because it has a bonded core, which the ELDX lacks. So, that said, all things equal, I'd expect the 175 grain Acubon long range to penetrate a little deeper than the 175 grain ELDX and retain a little more weight. Now, additionally, those new heavy and extremely aerodynamic .284 caliber bullets used by the 7PRC also have a really high ballistic coefficient. The bullets used in this comparison illustrate those differences well, with the 7PRC using 160 grain, 0.596 BC, and 175 grain, 0.689 BC bullets, outclassing the 150 grain, 0.455 BC, 162 grain, 0.631 BC bullets used by the 7 rim mag, as well as the 150 grain, 0.498 BC, 162 grain, 0.631 BC, and 175 grain with a 0.648 BC bullets used by the 28 Nosler. All right, let's talk about barrel life. Now, the three cartridges all have the same bore diameter and have similar case capacity. Throat erosion occurs faster with the 28 Nosler just because it uses so much more powder. Simply put, burning a lot more powder in the same amount of space will result in a shorter barrel life. That means that, in general, the 28 Nosler will simply wear out barrels faster than the other two cartridges. Exactly how fast that occurs depends on a number of factors, like the quality of the barrel, the exact ammo used, etc. Details vary here, but it's not unheard of for some 28 Nosler rifles to see a drop-off in accuracy after just a few hundred rounds. Others will last 800 to 1,000 rounds, but it is unusual to hear of them lasting much longer than that with full-powered ammo. The good news for hunters is that typical barrel life for even the 28 Nosler is more than enough to last for many years of hunting with no issues. Competition shooting is another deal, though, but we also just don't see the 28 Nosler used in high-volume competition shooting, partly due to this reason. Exactly when the barrel is unusable depends on the rifle as well as the hunter in question and what sort of performance they expect from their rifle. Those who want extremely tight groups for long-range shooting are probably going to want to change their barrel out sooner than those with slightly lower standards. What about the 7 Rim Mag and 7 PRC? All other things being equal, rifles in those chamberings will probably have a longer barrel life than a rifle in 28 Nosler. 1,500 to 3,000 rounds is thrown around a lot for a 7 Rim Mag barrel life, but it really just depends on a lot of stuff. The situation is probably going to be sim similar with the 7mm Precision Rifle Cartridge, which actually has a tiny bit less powder capacity than even the 7 Rim Mag. But it is still such a new cartridge, there's not a lot of real-world data on barrel life quite yet. But I will say that both will probably last quite a bit longer than a 28 Nosler barrel, though. All right, now let's talk about accuracy of these cartridges. External ballistics are extremely important, but performance on paper doesn't mean a darn thing if you can't hit your target. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Hornady implemented some design principles with the 7PRC to help optimize accuracy. This is the same stuff, same sort of design principles they used on the 6.5 and the 300 PRC. And specifically here, they built the cartridge with a very tight freebore diameter. Now, freebore is the smooth portion of a rifle barrel closest to the cartridge. Having that more snug freebore means there's less room for the bullet to yaw upon firing before engaging the rifling. That is can really help enhance accuracy, especially with extremely long bullets. So for that reason, the designers at Hornady built all three precision rifle cartridges with a tight freebore diameter in a manner similar to what they did with the 6.5 Creedmoor and Winchester did something similar with the 6.8 Western. Now, as good as the 28 Nosler is, and it is an excellent performing cartridge, the 28 Nosler is also known for being overbore. And some compared this fire-breathing magnum to a hot rod car. It has plenty of juice, lots and lots of power, but it needs to be tuned appropriately for best performance. 
That's not to say that the 28 nozzler isn't capable of great accuracy, because it is. However, it can also be finicky. Now, those concerns are much less of an issue with the more efficient 7mm PRC, though. So, with all that said, details will vary depending on the exact rifle, ammo, and the shooter in question when we talk about accuracy of these cartridges. However, the 7mm precision rifle cartridge probably has some of the best potential for accuracy available today using factory rifles and ammunition on average. Yes, there will be some specific outliers here or there that are better than average or worse than average for all of these different cartridges, but on average, factory ammo, factory rifles, the 7 PRC does have the advantage over the 7 Rim Mag and the 28 Nosler here. All right, let's talk about ammo availability. Of these three, the 7 Rim Mag is definitely the most widely available and the most commonly used. 28 Nosler is not quite as common or as popular, but it's by no means rare. The 7 PRC is literally brand new, but it has become extremely popular in an astonishingly short amount of time. The big ammo manufacturers like Barnes, Berger, Browning, Federal Premium, Hornady, HSM, Nosler, Remington, Sierra, Six Hour, Swift, and Winchester produce an incredible variety of 7mm Remington Magnum factory ammo. In fact, basically any manufacturer you can think of probably produces 7 Rim Mag ammo. As of mid-2023, there's only a couple of 28 Nosler hunting ammo loadings, though. First, it is available in the Federal Terminal Ascent line with a 155-grain Terminal Ascent bullet and the Hornady Precision Hunter line with a 162-grain ELTX bullet. Browning now produces 28 Nosler in their BXS line with a 139-grain Solid Copper and their BXC line with a 155-grain Terminal Tip. Nosler also produces 28 Nosler ammo in their Nosler Trophy Grade line with 160 grain Acubon, the Nosler Trophy Grade Partition line with 160 grain Partition, the Nosler E Tip line loaded with that 150 grain E Tip that we talked about earlier, the Nosler Ballistic Tip line with 160 grain Ballistic Tip, and the Nosler Trophy Grade Long Range line loaded with that 175 grain Acubon Long Range. At this instant, Hornady is the primary company that produces factory 7mm PRC ammo. They currently offer three loads for the cartridge, an offering in their match line with a 180 grain ELD match bullet, an offering in their outfitter line with a 160 grain CX bullet, and an offering in their precision hunter line with a 175 grain ELDX bullet. Now, while that match ammo is great for use at the range, look at the outfitter and the precision hunter loads for hunting, both of which are really good for all manner of game in North America and elsewhere in the world. Now, Federal recently started making 7mm PRC ammo as well in their premium and terminal ascent lines using a 175 grain ELDX and 155 grain terminal ascent. There's also rumors of a quote-unquote heavy terminal ascent bullet that may be coming out for the 7 PRC from Federal in the near future as well. Now, Remington will also offer the cartridge in their new Premier Long Range line with a 175 grain spear impact bullet soon as well. It's not available as I record this, but they've already announced it, so hopefully it'll be available in the very near future. Now, 7mm PRC ammo prospects are looking very good in the near future, and there's rumblings that other companies might pick it up too. I think it would be very interesting to see that cartridge loaded with 175 grain Acubon long range from Nosler, or maybe a new bullet that's even heavier and has an even higher BC, but is still bonded. And if that new quote unquote heavy terminal ascent bullet comes out from Federal, uh, if, it, if it performs well, I think that's potentially another excellent option for the 7 PRC too. Now, during normal times, almost any gun or sporting goods store is going to have a great variety of 7 Rim Mag ammo in stock. Now, the 28 Nosler is a more niche cartridge. You'll probably need to go to a larger or more specialized store to find that ammo, as many smaller retailers and local stores won't carry it, right? I've never seen 28 Nosler at my local academy, but like at a big Cabela's or something, I have seen it. Now, there are things are more hit or miss with the 7 PRC, but Hornady has done a surprisingly good job of producing ammo in that chambering as I record this. Uh, so things are better than you would you might think for a brand new cartridge like that, but at this instant, and all things considered, the 7 Rim Mag is definitely the cartridge that you're going to find the easiest to get and cheapest ammo for, once again, as I record this. Now, the rifle situation is similar with these cartridges, too. 
Now, of the three, the 7 Rim Mag is by far the most popular. It's available in several different versions of the Remington 700, the Winchester Model 70, same for the Browning X-Bolt, AB3, Christensen Arms Ridgeline, Kimber Hunter, Mossberg Patriot, Ruger Hawkeye, Savage Axis and 110, the Tika T3X, the Weatherby Vanguard, and the Winchester XPR. Basically, almost any popular centerfire rifle in current production is available in 7 Rim Mag. Things are different with the 28 Nosler, though. That is primarily available in higher-end rifles that are best able to take advantage of the long-range performance characteristics of the cartridge. Uh, as I record this, it's available in rifles like the Christensen Arms Mesa, Ridgeline, and ELR, a couple different versions of the Browning X-Bolt, several different rifles from Bergara, from Gunworks, and from Seekins Precision. And of course, Nosler does offer the 28 Nosler in their M48 rifle and their new M21 rifles. Now, as far as the 7 PRC goes, rifle manufacturers like Christensen Arms, Fierce Firearms, GA Precision, Gunworks, Hill Country Rifles, Mossberg, Proof Research, Remington, Ruger, Savage Arms, Seekins Precision, and Springfield Armory all produce rifles in 7mm PRC. And that list of 7mm PRC rifles is probably going to continue to grow as well. Now, just like ammo, during normal times, the 7 Rim Mag is the most common and the easiest to find of these three cartridges in terms of rifles. The same thing goes for finding 7 Rim Mag rifles that are less expensive. But there are some other reasonably priced rifles, like the Mossberg Patriot, that are available in 7mm PRC. In this same vein, it's also important to realize that gun manufacturers tend to put longer barrels on rifles chambered in magnum cartridges in general. That is because those cartridges need a longer barrel to effectively and efficiently burn that larger powder charge. If you try and use a really big fire-breathing magnum cartridge, like any of these three, but especially the 28 Nosler and a really short-barreled rifle, there's a really good chance that you're going to lose a lot of velocity and deal with a lot of velocity variation from shot to shot too, which makes it, both of which make it really tough to get good accuracy, especially at extended range. Plus, they're going to be super loud and have a gigantic muzzle flash on them. <laughs> I can't imagine what shooting a 28 Nosler in a 16-inch barrel rifle would, would look like. Now, like I said, this is true for all Magnum cartridges, to include these three, uh, but it is especially true with the 7 Rim Mag and the 28 Nosler. Now, the 7 PRC is available in rifles with 20, 22-inch, and 24-inch barrels as I record this, and it actually performs surprisingly well out of a shorter barrel. Barrel lengths do vary depending on manufacturer and exact model, but 24 and even 26-inch barrels are pretty standard with the 7mm Remington Magnum. The 28 Nosler is most common in rifles with a 26-inch barrel, though. Now, all three of these cartridges are available in Browning's X-Bolt Speed Suppressor Ready line of rifles. These rifles have a little bit shorter barrel than is typical for a hunting rifle in the different chamberings that are available in it, uh, but they're also designed for use with a suppressor. So the rifles in this line are going to have some of the shortest barrel lengths that you're going to find really anywhere in a lot of the chamberings that are available in it. For instance, they make a 308 version of the X-Bolt Suppressor Ready with an 18-inch barrel. Uh, they also make a 7 PRC version of this rifle with a 20-inch barrel, a 7 Rim Mag version of the rifle with a 22-inch barrel, and then the same thing with the 20 8 Nosler also has a 22-inch barrel. That's because they just want to make them a little bit shorter uh, to make them just less bulky and unwieldy to deal with when you got a 6, 7, 8, 9-inch long suppressor strapped to the end of it there. So even in a case like this, the 7 PRC is usually going to have a shorter barrel than is the case with the other two. Now, that is more important in some cases, in some situations, than it is in others. We'll come back to that here in a second. So just keep that in mind. The 28 Nosler generally has the longest barrel, followed by the 7 Rim Mag, and then the 7 PRC. Okay, so with all that said, which of these three cartridges is right for you? Do you primarily hunt medium-sized game, like whitetail deer, hogs, or black bear at ranges within 200 yards? All three are extremely effective deer hunting cartridges and will absolutely get the job done on medium-sized game if you do your part. There really isn't a significant difference between the three on deer inside 200 yards, and all are more than powerful enough for that sort of work. The 28 Nosler in particular will be harder on both your shoulder and your wallet than the others, though. If you're going to be hunting in really thick brush or in like the tight confines of a box blind or something where you don't 
want to be banging your rifle around a spooking game or anything like that, remember what I just said with regards to barrel length for rifles in these cartridges. That extra couple inches in overall length can be a real headache to deal with when you're trying to quickly and quietly maneuver for a shot. None are really truly excellent options for a seriously lightweight or compact rifle, but a 7mm PRC with a 20 or 22 inch barrel will definitely be easier to handle than a 7 rim mag with a 24 inch barrel or a 28 nozzle rifle with a 26 inch barrel. Now what about if you're looking for a cartridge better suited for long range hunting for a game like mule deer or pronghorn in open country where you might need to take a shot at a couple hundred yards or potentially deal with pretty windy conditions? Once again, they all work really well in this role, and situations like these are where they start to stand apart from other cartridges. The 28 Nosler carries more energy out to extended range than the others, but the 7mm PRC is also an excellent choice here, and it nips right on the heels of the 28 Nosler with quite a bit less recoil. And it also just does better in the wind as well. Not at all to throw shade on the 7 rim mag here. It's also a great choice for this sort of hunting. I would not at all give anyone a hard time for using it on a mule deer hunt, you know, if, where they might need to take a three, 400 yard shot or something. But the other two just have those advantages over it. It's not bad, it's just not quite as good as the 7 PRC or the 28 Nosler on paper here, though. Now, do you want a hunting cartridge that's better suited for work on bigger game? Caribou, moose, elk, elan, kudu, red stag, something like that. Again, all will work great when used on bigger game all over the world. And if we're being honest, the 7 Rim Mag is by far the most popular elk hunting cartridge of the three historically, and it has taken way more elk than the other two over the years. But that's primarily due to the fact that the 7mm Remington Magnum has just been around so much longer. Most hunters don't need the capabilities of the 28 Nosler, and something like the 7 Rim Mag will work great for the majority of elk hunting situations. And I'm not trying to damn it with faint praise here either. It's a great elk cartridge. I personally don't feel comfortable shooting game out much past, say, 450, maybe 550 yards myself. And the 7mm Rim Mag performs great out that far, and really quite a bit farther in the right hands. However, a person with the right shooting skills who wanted to extend their effective range by another couple hundred yards would be well served by the 28 Nosler or the 7mm PRC. Once again, the 28 Nosler is an excellent choice for a hunter looking for a really good cartridge for use on bigger game, especially at extended range. But the 7mm PRC is right there with it, and it also recoils quite a bit less. Remember, there's less than 100 foot-pounds of difference in kinetic energy between those two 175-grain loads for the 28 Nosler and the 7mm PRC out past 600 yards. Now, that 28 Nosler with the 175-grain Acubon long range does have a bigger advantage at closer range, but the 7 PRC is still plenty powerful, and it also carries a lot of energy out past 500 yards, even with that 160-grain CX bullet. And for people that don't like the 175-grain ELDX for whatever reason on bigger game, that 160 CX is an excellent option, and so is the terminal ascent load from Federal. Plus, the 7 PRC just does so great uh, in the wind. Now, that might be a toss-up, and I wouldn't blame someone for choosing the 28 Nosler, but I personally lean towards the 7 PRC here, and I think it is a good choice for someone who wants an all-around hunting rifle for everything from deer up to and including elk and moose. Are you specifically hunting brown or grizzly bear, though? What if you hunt in Canada or Alaska and you need a heavy-hitting cartridge just in case you find yourself on the wrong end of a grizzly or a brown bear attack? I don't recommend any of these cartridges for actually hunting the big bears or other species of dangerous game like Cape Buffalo, but they will work on the big bears in a pinch. It's pretty close to a toss-up between the three. I would definitely prefer to carry something heavier like a 338 Win Mag or a 375 H&H in grizzly country, especially if I were hunting those bears. But if you had to use one of these three, I would use a premium heavy for caliber 160 grain monolithic or 175 grain lead core bullet if you go that route. Now, what if you're sensitive to recoil and you need something that just doesn't have as much kick to it? All of these cartridges have fairly stout recoil. The 7 millimeter PRC and especially the 7 rim mag are definitely the better lower recoiling options when compared to the 28 Nosler though. You should consider further stepping down to something like a 6.8 Western if you want Magnum performance with even less recoil, though. Now, the 7 Rim Mag, the 7 PRC, and the 28 Nosler are all excellent rifle cartridges. 
Now, while the 7mm PRC and the 28 Nosler are both much newer and more specialized cartridges that offer certain advantages over the 7mm Remington Magnum, few hunters really need the extra capability offered by those cartridges, and there's not a darn thing wrong with the 7mm Rim Mag either. The differences between these three cartridges are fairly significant in certain respects, but they're all suitable for many hunting tasks, ranging from hunting North American game to plains game in Africa to deer in the Southern Hemisphere and in Europe. So carefully analyze your potential needs before making a decision. In the end, a lot of this decision comes down to personal preference, the exact game you're after, and the conditions of your hunt. So choose the one you feel most comfortable with, and it will probably serve you well afield. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now and hit that like button. Just click that thumbs up button and the subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos about hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. Now, for more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they are best suited for, click the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting cartridges. Now, I'm going to turn it over to you. Which of these three do you prefer? The 7mm Remington Magnum, the 7mm Precision Rifle Cartridge, or the 28 Nosler? What game have you successfully taken with them? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. And also, feel free to leave a comment with requests for other cartridge comparisons you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.